So it's time for Back in the Day, and you might uh, recognise my special guest today from programmes like Birds of a Feather and, of course, Green Jill back in the uh, back in the 80s. It's, it's Lee McDonald, a.k.a. Zamo. I'm a league, you're a league. Great pleasure, mate, because I actually grew up watching your programme with similar ages, and I guess it sort of highlighted that programme. We used to rush home from school to watch it, you know, to, get, to make sure we could watch it. Highlight of our week, and I guess some of the struggles that kids were going through at the time were... You know, were you know sort of replicated in our lives at home. So you tell some great stories, and especially the, the you know the drugs line with, with, with Zamo. But I guess the pressures today for young people, and you've got two kids, mm. uh, are slightly different, especially with the online stuff. Yeah, I find it um, because they're talking about bringing Grange Hill back now, and it would still work now because I've got two kids, and we've had the same issues. They've watched all of the Grange Hill episodes, except for the drugs one. I wouldn't let them watch that, which is really bizarre because everybody watched it in the time. Um, but we was talking about this relating to stuff and the bullying still goes on today. But the difference I feel with the bullying now is when we got bullied or if I got bullied or there was a bit of bullying going on at school, at half past three, you went home, it was all forgotten. And then next day you went in. But now uh, the kids are getting it with internet, social media. The bullying is 24-7. Um, and the mental health uh, issue now is massive. And I think that has got so much to do with it. When the girls and the boys are sitting at home in bed, all they're getting is bombarded by bullying uh, through social media and stuff like that. So the issue is probably bigger now. Yeah than it was when we were back See, in the, the bully, day. See, the bully in Granger was something called Gripper. Yes, Gripper, yeah, Gripper, Gripper Stepson. Stepson, that's it. And uh, I remember he was, in the end, they sorted him out, yes. didn't they? I think the good old-fashioned yes, way. Yes, yes. Uh, but today, that, like you say, it doesn't stop at school. Yeah. They get home, they've got the phones, they've got the, the tablets, they've got the laptops, and it's more of a mental bullying, you know. Young people, I think, for me, are sometimes far too focused on their appearance, especially the girls. That can lead to online bullying. That can lead to girls wanting to appear... Uh, a certain way, you know, keep up with the peers, with the makeup, with the, with the clothes, etc. It's a lot more pressure, Lee, isn't and it? It's quite sad now because um, a lot of the kids, when they send, I think it's Snapchat, they send pictures, but they don't look like themselves. Yeah. They are completely um, redone through images and through... Uh, well, it's the filters, isn't it? It's the filters, yeah. and, it, and it's unbelievable. And it's like, I was saying this the other day, I had some people come in the shop who I've been speaking to and I've seen the picture online. Um, and then when they come in, they look completely different. And these are people in their late 30s, early 40s, <laughs> and, and they're, doing, they're doing filters. I'm like, yeah. come on. Yeah. I would never filter myself. It's just not something I do. And my boy doesn't do it. Um, but Katie, I'm sure there's a bit of filtering going on. She won't admit it, but I'm sure there's a bit of filtering going on. And it's such a shame because of all the programs like Love Island, all the girls are looking yeah, stunning and that. Yeah. The girls, uh, the, you know, the kids growing up have got this image. They feel they've, they've got a... You know, yeah, but girls, to. to be honest with you, Lee, girls have always put a little bit of makeup on, haven't they? You yes, know, and they, yes. they've, they've probably wore these skirts a little bit shorter yes. than what they yeah. should. Have. They've always had that sort of thing in them at school, but like you say, the filters now, it's, it's instant. They, yeah, can, they can make themselves look like a model. Yeah. Uh, but the sad reality is that most young girls are not models. That's right. Uh, and they're living up, they're trying to create an image of themselves, yeah. but they can't live up to it. No, and it's a shame. There's a really good advert on. Um, I've seen it on telly where it, it strips back, but it goes back to the girl before she's putting the makeup on. And it's a really poignant, you, you look at it and it's brilliant because that's how they should be. Kids should be kids now. Yeah. And they're not from the age of, they get phones now, what, eight or nine, yes, 10, and they they're, they're open to, we try and limit what the kids can watch, what our kids yeah. can watch, but it's impossible. They can get a laptop from anywhere. So kids will be 11 upwards, uh, are subject to all of this going on, all this imagery that they've got to live up to and obviously all the the other stuff on there the porn and that internet i said to my boy the other day i said i wish uh, and i'm sure all parents do this you'd grown up in my yeah, era yeah, uh, when you come home uh, no phones you come home you go out to the lights go down you're in for dinner uh, clip around the ear if yeah. you did something wrong but now it's like 24 7 with a with a the, with the bullying and stuff. And I keep telling them, you, you, it, my day was uh, better. They're better. Clip around the ear or when you misbehave. Absolutely. And, and a bath once a week if you needed one <laughs> yeah. or not. And, uh, but seriously, Lee, do you think, when you were filming Green Jill, did that sort of mirror your life at, at a normal school? Um, it did. I think Green Jill was really clever because um, why it was so popular, in my opinion, is Phil Redmond picked, in our group, there was Faye and that, me, uh, Lee Spark and Roland and Gripper, obviously a bit older. 
but there was a character from every school. So they would pick a bully, a, a nice character, an ugly character, a fat character. So everybody could relate. They'd go, wow, I've got one of them in yeah, my school, yeah. or he's in my class, or she's in my class. And I think that was what was very clever. So you could relate to the characters. And I think everybody wanted to be at Grange Hill. Before Grange Hill, when I was in it, when I think they threw a, uh, a bench in the swimming pool yeah. in, the, uh, in the 78, eight, and I was like, wow. Um, so to go in and do it, it was a lot worse at Grange Hill than my school. My school was quite strict. So to go on Grange Hill and uh, get paid for it and do all the things <laughs> that you want to do was yeah. amazing. But so I guess one of the problems we've got in school these days, especially as an MP, what I see is we've got, we've got these um, so children that are confused and uh, we've got the ridiculous situation Situation where some children are presented as animals, you know, cats and, and horses and ponies, and, uh, and some of the, the staff at school actually, you know, they the cow tow into this. And I think back in the day, we had a few mischievous kids at school yes. who would have played that, made silly noises, animal noises, <laughs> pretending to be this and be that. But I think we've gone a little bit too far these days, don't you? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it all needs to be stripped back. But that's just my opinion because I think. When I grew up through school, it was a lot more respect. It was it was just different. You were who you were, yeah. um, and it was a lot it was a lot more basic then. It is. I would hate to be going back to school now. I wouldn't yeah. like it. So you talk about the, the the characters like the Roland was a really good character. Yes. He was he was the big lad, weren't he? He was uh, he was bullied at school, weren't mm. he? And um, I suppose that sort of typified that uh, the horrible bully, the school bully at school. The lad who was a little bit chunky, you know. I said it uh, earlier on, on on one of my other shows that in in my day, the the, the larger kid, the fat kid, we used to call him the fat kid in school. They were usually ones that were living with a grandma or something like that. They'd been pampered, they'd been spoiled a little yeah. bit, given that extra bit of love. Sometimes people think love by giving them giving them extra. But we're seeing scores now. There's a lot more Rolands in school yes. now, isn't there? They yes. seem to become a little bit acceptable. <laughs> I mean, I mean, back in the day in Grange, that was just one, just one yes. child. Do you still get on with Roland? You still see him? I, I speak to Roland. We we meet up from time to time, and all the Grange Hill people speak through social media, yeah. and we have events every couple of years. But me and Roland, we speak to each other at least once a week. I'm terribly, he'll probably call me and I'll say, I'll call you back and I'm a bit late in calling people back. But we chat just about families and catch ups, what people are doing. But don't what you think, doing. Lee, that for, for, that, for that kid at that age, I guess you were 12, 11, whatever you were, to play that character, it's incredibly brave of him to do that. Yes, and he, um, I think he said the only reason he got the part is he, he rung up and they were looking for a large kid and he turned up and he was a fat kid and he'll admit that now. Um, and yeah, I think it was, at that time to take on that character. But I think when you're a kid and you do it, you you don't realise how big the show's yeah, going to be yeah. um, at that time. And I guess time. He, he got the chance then. He got free reign to express his own pain yes. and sorrow to, yes. to a character, which, mm. is, which is incredible, really. Yeah, and I think he got lots of, um, uh, obviously, one well, emails then, but loads of letters from kids uh, relating to him and saying they've really helped, yeah. you know, him because they'd opened the subject wide again, you know, and yeah. seen what... Uh, fat kids, so-called fat kids, uh, abuse they got. And I think it helped a lot of people. Did you get a lot of fan mail back in the day? Oh, golly, yes, we <laughs> did. We got stacks and stacks of it. It used to be in the BBC. And for me, it was amazing because um, I went out to, we're on a school trip to the London Museum and with my school, and there was two girls' schools in there. And uh, I got chased by the girls. Really? Out. Yeah, I got kicked out yeah. by the security guards who said to my school, we can't have uh, him in here because he's causing too You're much like a sex symbol, then, were you? It was lovely. I was like, yeah, and, and not being a Brad Pitt lookalike. Uh, growing up at 14, 13, 14 and having that, it was like absolutely amazing. I had a brilliant time. So how, how did your parents bring you back down to earth then? Uh, all that? My parents were really, I used to box at the time, so my dad kept me feet on the ground with that. And my mum was a chaperone on Grange Hill, so... She oh, okay. would keep an eye. And they always said to me, because I was supposed to audition for the first year, but my parents wouldn't let me. So I did a year in secondary school. And then my mum said, as long as you keep up your schoolwork yeah. every year yeah. and the repoots are all right, you can continue to the next year. So they would have pulled me out as soon as I... My school was well, I look, from. mate, I used to watch Green Jill all those years ago. <laughs> I never thought I'd be stood aside. I would say, it's a real pleasure for me to have you so, Lee. Oh, Lee, absolute pleasure.